of the most popular sessions here at the Congress are the breakthrough sessions. Now, in these sessions, you have a series of experts who essentially read all the journals for you. They pick out the best bits and they summarise what are the real breakthroughs in that area. So I'm delighted to be joined by Nick Maskell. And there's quite a lot of other people here, as you can probably hear. Uh, Nick, Hello. you've been looking at uh, plural linings. And uh, what, what does you find? Well, basically, I had to look through all of the journals and pick out what I thought were the best four articles that have been published in the last 12 months to do with malignant plural disease. This is a very common problem. It affects three quarters of a million people in Europe each year. And the average survival is very limited at four to six months. So we need interventions that are going to focus on their quality of life. And patients don't want to spend prolonged periods in hospital. So three of the four papers that I reviewed were to do with indwelling pleural catheters, which is a tunneled catheter that can basically be put in as a day case for patients that have symptomatic effusions and then they can be drained in the community by the healthcare team that works in the community. And if we drain them regularly enough, potentially they can seal up and dry and the catheter can be removed. So I, the first of the papers that I looked at was a study called Ample One, which was a randomized controlled trial looking at how many days people spent in hospital with either having that technique or a more traditional admit to the ward, put a drain in and do a talc slurry. And the study found that the patients with an indwelling pleural catheter spent less days in hospital. And importantly, if they were having an indwelling pleural catheter place, they didn't require another pleural procedure for the rest of their life. Whereas if they're in the other arm, then 20% of them needed to come back at ho into hospital at some stage to have another pleural procedure. So that was an important study and, and breakthrough and adds to our knowledge of the literature. The second study, looked at whether draining patients via their catheter every day was actually better than draining it just when they became breathless. And it actually found that symptom-wise, patients were actually very similar with either method of drainage, but the chance of your lung sealing and stopping producing fluid so the catheter was removed was much higher in the daily drainage group. So that's important information for us to take away when we're interested in whether the patient wants us to try and seal the lung and remove the catheter or just drain them when they become breathless. And of course many people are very unhappy with the catheter. It's not a, it's not a comfortable thing, is it, for them to have? Well, that's, that's exactly right. And in fact, one of the previous studies had shown that people were getting pain where, at the end of drainages. And so this study actually looked very closely at patient-centered outcomes such as pain and breathlessness and found no difference between the arms of those two studies. So that was important for us. The next paper that I reviewed was an important combination of both techniques. We've talked about talc slurry pleurodesis need to happen on the ward and the patient stays in for five days, but an indwelling pleural catheter can be managed in the community and the patient doesn't need to be admitted. If we combine both techniques, do we get an improvement? So if we actually put an indwelling pleural catheter in, drain it regularly, and then at day 10, instill talc down the indwelling pleural catheter, still as an outpatient, can we actually get the best of both worlds and get an increased chance of the lung lining sealing? And this study was done around the UK, 22 centres took part, and actually showed a significant increase in the pleuresis rate if talc was given down the indwelling pleural catheter. But importantly, it showed that those catheters didn't become more blocked with the talc, and they, the patients didn't get lots of pain at home, which were two concerns before the study started. So I think that potentially this is a step change in management and if you're placing an indwelling pleural catheter in someone and they haven't got significant trapped lung, then actually after the catheter's been in for a week or so, considering giving talc down the drain as an outpatient appointment might double their chance of having a self pleurodesis within the next 10 weeks. So really a very important study indeed. Yes. Okay, thank you very much indeed for that. So if you want to look through that or indeed any of the other breakthrough uh, papers in that session, you know where you can find it, live at ERS+.